Hello and welcome to this uh, video short today. We're going to be looking at um, planning reliability. Um, I'm going to create a trend or a lagging metric on uh, the schedule ship date for sales orders. I'm interested to see um, when there's been supply changes, what, what impact that's having on my scheduling. And so I'm going to create a, a blitz report that's going to track these trends and help the planners uh, to try and optimize with suppliers or, or with the manufacturing process. Um, so if we start by looking at uh, well, creating a blitz report, uh, I created one uh, earlier. I've called it the planning reliability metric. Uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, looking for trends, uh, analysis in the schedule ship and the promising. And uh, let me just show you the setup behind that. Uh, you see here we've got a, a very simple SQL. Uh, and let's just have a look what uh, what's in there. So we've got order number, line number, the ordered item, the planner involved for the product. Um, we're looking at some audit data. So I've added uh, historical ship date and I've added historical promise date. Uh, and again, I'm using the audit tables like we use for supplier changes on a previous video that I've shared with you all. Um, and you see here we've we've got the audit view in play, the order table, the order lines, and the item table. Uh, and some uh, we're joining those tables as well. Uh, in terms of parameters, um, I've uh, not added one, but uh, let's just add planner code so you can see how straightforward that is. Um, Obviously, we use the column called planner code, where it's equal to uh, the bind variable we're going to create on the fly. Um, so we won't need to use any MVLs here. Um, if we then use some of the seeded, uh, there's always um, many uh, seeded value sets. So let's use a, a seeded value set. Uh, well, maybe that's a bit ambitious. So planner code. I'm going to see if I've got one. Yes, I have. Uh, there's a standard list from Oracle, so let's use that. Um, I'm going to pop in here a particular planner I'm, I'm interested in. Uh, Mr. Smith, John Smith, I would imagine. <laughs> Very original from Oracle. This is a vision database. Um, so I've done that, but let's just show you a little bit of the setup I had to put in place. So from a, um, an audit table, there's, there's a five minute setup you have to do on the um, order lines table. Uh, so I'm just going to show you what that is. Um, it will be order lines all I would imagine. Um, let's just if I can find it. And there we go. Um, you see here, I added promise dates and scheduled ship date to this table. So I can audit track these and build this metric. Um, quite straightforward. Uh, obviously, you need to get approval to get your system administrator to do that and, and check that it doesn't have any performance implications. Um, but we're only changing, tracking a couple of columns. Um, but we would do some, obviously, do some testing around that to make sure. Um, I mentioned earlier, uh, we've, we've assigned this. Uh, we've got the categories available. So from, from this viewpoint now, I should get a list of... Uh, orders that uh, the planner John Smith's been working on um, and it should now give us a list of all the sales orders where there's been some shifts directly into Excel as you would expect from Blitz. Um, can't really see the wood through the trees here so I'm going to go back and add another parameter here uh, which is you know, again quite straightforward. I'll just add uh, parameter number 20. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, sales order. Uh, it's the order number and we've got the ability to put in the standard order number and again I'm going to use uh, the bind variable there but I'm going to match on uh, the standard oracle one because I'm sure there's plenty of those around we'll look on the ONT side you see here, order number. I'm going to pick up this one. And I'm going to use our default from planning. Or, so I'm in the sales order management module here. We're going to come back to that in a moment. Uh, I'm just going to save that. And now if we run it, 
we should have the uh, the change here which is just going to give us with this particular order number uh, available oh and that one no, oh sorry <laughs> it was replacing the previous one okay so now we've got um, we can see the wood through the trees we've got a couple of lines on here the scheduled ship date as of now versus the historical date so we can see there's a trend building here for this particular product it uh, is fluctuated from the 27th to the 3rd of may uh, 3rd of march rather and more lately it's shifted out to the 26th of june so we could give that uh, to, to the, the analytical team and they could build us um, they could build a, a trend analysis from this data so back to uh, where we were um, so from a, from a user perspective um, you know they would see these parameters and I'm just going to show you the sales order so the sales order uh, you saw here the, the scheduled ship date is showing us the 26th uh, this one looks okay actually so it looks on looks on track um, at the 17th of February which is what's in fact yesterday um, but let's go into planning and I'll show you something interesting so from a planner or this plan is serving the available to promise for for all the sales orders we can see here that there are recommendations um, and with action of release so typically the planner would release these I'm not suggesting they release all these on mass they, they probably would have a program that's batched them up for them um, so typically you would go through every time there are slippages in your supply or your manufacturing uh, process then you would reschedule the affected sales orders so here we have um, our sales order line uh, let's have a look line two oh it's line one oh that one's <laughs> that hence it wasn't shipped it needs to be pushed out to the 22nd of may uh, so some alarm bells will be going here uh, I'm just going to save that and release it uh, from the plan. I'm in the planner workbench in the advanced planning module. Um, so I'm, I'm now going to uh, release this particular exception or recommendation from Oracle um, from the planning engine. And that should then have a direct impact on, on this particular sales order, which will then fall into our, our trend analysis. Um, so if I was to re-trigger this or refresh this view you see here now the recommendation has come across from planning and now our new schedule ship date is to 22nd of May so therein uh, a trend would start to occur or at least be visible from blitz so let, let's um, there's a the planning you see these recommendations have gone pink uh, they've been executed uh, if we go back to our uh, planning metric just to see if we've uh, managed to track these these changes which hopefully we will have done um, and that will overlay the last um, Excel report any second now and you see here we've we've now tracked our historical change here as well um, so the reports working obviously you might want to do some more work with it um, and we go across to blitz and we can certainly do that from the user perspective they've got the ability to not to develop but what they can do is they can move columns around or they can remove them from, from the report they can change the order in which they show um, and then they can save that in a template and share it with with users other users so it's more of a key sort of uh, reporting user function um, and so that, that's quite a handy feature for them um, if we were to uh, close this down now uh, you can see here uh, we've got the version control as I mentioned we've probably got this uh, we could now say uh, something like ready for test uh, which should be something that as a developer we could actually track what, what's going on here very useful feature um, and so from a governance viewpoint we've got good control and really that was um, about all I wanted to show you on this uh, short video uh, blitz metric uh, so with that <laughs> if you've got any further questions come back to me and we can uh, have a discussion